All right, here is the PID controlled oven. Haven't fired it up yet. We're going to see if it blows up when I hit the switch. I got a fire extinguisher, don't worry. Fan turned on. Oh, blew the breaker. Son of a bitch. All right, I think this is my issue. This plug looks like it has, here's the hot, the black right here, and the neutral coming off of the same doodad. What the hell's up with that? It's the same on this side. That blue is the hot, white's the neutral. All right, finally, here it is, the PID oven. Um, Charlie Irby, couldn't done it without you. I figured out that these elements were wired in parallel and I needed them to be run in series. I would have never figured that out, actually. Um, Charlie called that one because it rated for like 60 volts. So you put 110 to it, you're going to blow them up. So put an on-off switch right here. Turns the PID on. I also wired the convection fan directly to the hot supply wire coming off of the switch. So when the switch is on, the fan's on. You don't want it to have your fan turning on and off real fast. So let's see if I remember how to do this. How to set this thing up. No, I don't want the alarm. Let me get this converted over to Fahrenheit and we'll give it a shot. Okay, I got it converted over to Fahrenheit. I have it set at 390 degrees and I'm also running the auto tune right now to let it configure the uh, PID parameters for this oven. Um, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but I also put one inch ceramic insulation around the entire oven, including over here in this cavity. Um, I got the SSR solid state relay mounted back here on that far wall. And it's, I love that one, it's insulation because you can, it's, it's room temperature up top, but it's 218 and then we'll give it a while and see how, see how that goes. So from a safety standpoint, it's, it's not going to burn you if you put your hand on it with that, with that ceramic insulation on there. Now, one thing you'll notice is that typically these elements will be turning on and off intermittently. Um, in order, you know, that's when you set your your knob or whatever, it just turns on and off until it thinks it's where it's at. It's it kind of sucks, but with the PID running, these elements are going to stay on until that temperature hits where it's supposed to be, and then they'll start fluctuating to keep it at that temperature. So it should heat up a hell of a lot faster, uh, preheat a hell of a lot faster. Um, yeah, with this auto tune, I want to see what it does and see how much it overshoots and then see what it changes. So we'll get back to you when it does that. All right, we're approaching 390. Let's see what it does. This is on the auto tune, by the way. So it's probably going to go over and see how much it goes over. And once it completes the auto tune process, it'll change stuff from there. We're 21 degrees over our set point. Still rising. I think it's going to go back down below 390 quite a bit before it completes the auto tune. To it, it, it's measuring how much the temperature is fluctuating when the output's on and off right now. The reason I'm doing this is for high tech bullets too, because when I high tech needs to be a certain temperature for you know for for the bullets to cure, and my oven was just diving in temperature when I threw the bullets in there. It was only hitting like 330, and it wouldn't hit up. And by the time the bullets were done cooking, you know, 10, 12 minutes, it was only at 375. So it, I did this just to not worry about it again. So now the elements are firing back up.
All right, the auto tune is complete, so let's see what it does when it drops back down around 390. Really, I don't want it to get above 400 degrees in that oven, so that's why I have a set point at 390, just in case it does fluctuate, you know, up or down. When I throw a tray of bullets in, it's going to be working overtime because the bullets are, are going to be cold. So this auto tune really should be done when I throw a tray of bullets in, but I'm I'm just doing this to function test and see how this thing works. Looks like I'm about out of video, so I'll have to restart this, hang on. Yeah, I'll have to read the manual and, and get the history just figured out, but I just wanted to show that this can be done. You don't have to have it. I mean, you could always take and um, turn your oven on to the broil setting so that your elements are pretty much constantly on and just plug it into the same PID you plug your pot into and it can do the same exact thing, but I just didn't want to dick around with changing them around so I just got the on off switch here I flip it on I let it go and it takes care of itself no big deal yeah it looks like it needs help with that hysteresis setting if I can figure out which one it is so I just want to make that quick vid um, I ran into an issue of how this was wired in the first place I'll throw in a clip I recorded of how it was wired and how I had to change it like I said, basically it was wired in parallel. I had to change it over to series. So I had, yeah, I'll show you. I had a line in that was my hot supply and it had the neutral coming off of the same exact connector. So it was blowing my breaker and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I had to ask Charlie for help and we got it figured out. You guys are a lifesaver. Jim is Charlie, um, Jim, Gramps, he was there too helping out. Uh, appreciate you guys' help a lot. I, I would have been scratching my head for hours about this. So, yeah. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, you don't need one of these on your oven, but why not, right? So, see you tonight, Uncle Jim's chat. Everybody have a good day.